Hello and welcome to worship. We are grateful for so many things on this Thanksgiving weekend, but none more than the love that our Savior has for us. Let's stand as we sing this first song together and offer up our worship and praise to him this morning.
is so worthy of our worship and praise always. No matter how down we might feel or hopeless, God is there. And he is going to provide us rest and joy. And he wants us to remember that, but also to share that good news with others. That he is there waiting with his arms open wide, ready to accept us just as we are. for our Lord in prayer. Please be seated.
Father God, we thank you for another day to be here together to worship you. These past days, we have lifted up all the things we are thankful for, our family, our friends, seeing people we might not have seen in a while. But Father, you are at the top of our list to be grateful for. We are grateful for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Thankful that you invite us into your presence just as we are, and that we can lean on you for the strength to get through each day when it might feel impossible, Lord. We are so grateful, not only that we can call you Lord and Savior, but we call you our friend. We are grateful that you know our hearts, Lord, that we know what we want to say even before the words come out of our mouths, that you know every hair on our head and the path that you've laid out before us. Help us to remember that you want us to come to you, Lord, in all times, in all situations, because you love us unconditionally. We want to know you more, and we long to be more like you as your children. We aim to follow you wherever you want to take us. For you know what is good and right, and you know what is best for us, Lord. Today, we give you all of our worries and anxieties. We've been bearing burdens, Lord, that we don't need to carry any longer. You can handle these burdens, Lord, so we ask that you hear us now as we take time to silently hand over those things that are weighing down on us. So take time to hear us now, Lord, as we silently confess those things over to you. Father, you are the healer. And just as we have placed our own burdens in your lap, we also place loved ones and friends in your healing hands. Do for them what only you can do, Lord. Heal them and make them new. We ask that you restore bodies to health and wholeness calm, troubled minds, break the chains of addiction, overcome disease, and repair those wounds that some feel are cut so deep, Lord. And as we go forth from this place today, help us to be faithful in living and declaring your good news in our community, our nation, and our world. Empower us to use our voices to help bring peace and love to all of your children. Remind us, Lord, that your light lives in us, and it is our job to spread that light, to be a beacon of hope, and to bring people to know you, Lord. And we ask also that you hear your children now as we join as one voice and pray the prayer that you taught saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
please stand as we sing this next song and continue to declare our desire to follow our Lord. So worship, so nice to see you all. Please turn and greet those around you. at the Welcome Center. In addition, a Code Blue training for new volunteers is Tuesday, November 28th at 7 p.m. at Woodside. Reserve your spot on the connection card. Next week is a busy one around Woodside. 
First up is the Christmas sing-along Friday, December 1st from 7 to 9 p.m. in the Vineyard. Members of the Woodside Worship Teams will lead us in singing our favorite hymns and rock, pop, and traditional Christmas songs. Bring your favorite Christmas cookie to share. Then, on Saturday, December 2nd, a mission team from Woodside will travel to Kensington to support the work of Cast Your Cares. New volunteers are always welcome. Check the interest box on the connection card and you will be contacted with details. Then, Sunday, December 3rd, is the start of our Advent message series, Star Search, in search of the God beyond the galaxies. Throughout December, we'll get to know the God who left the galaxies to be with us and learn how to let Jesus light our way in the darkness. Young at Heart, Woodside's group for retired and senior adults will have a Christmas luncheon Tuesday, December 5th from 12 to 2 p.m. Everyone is invited to enjoy Christmas music led by Mark Sherman. Celebrate the Christmas season at Woodside's annual Advent Night, an evening of serving, worship, and dinner on Sunday, December 10th. There are two start times for hands-on mission opportunities for all ages, followed by a meal. Find complete details in your bulletin and RSVP for the start time on the connection card. Higher Ground will begin at 6.30 p.m. instead of its usual time. Bring a non-perishable food item to support a local pantry. Angel Tree Gifts support 75 children from two organizations this year. Purchase the gifts, follow the instructions on the tag, and return to Woodside no later than December 10th. You can order poinsettias in honor or memory of someone and help decorate our worship spaces for Christmas Eve. Find order envelopes at the Welcome Center. Deadline to order is December 17th. It's time to sign the Woodside Partner Covenant for 2024. There's no cost to be a partner, and it allows you to vote at congregational meetings and be considered for nomination as an elder or deacon. The covenant is good for one year. Find a paper copy at the Welcome Center or scan the QR code in your bulletin to sign online. Have you ever questioned, how does God guide us? Alpha offers answers. Alpha is coming to Woodside January 2024. Check the box on the connection card to learn more. Those are the announcements. Be sure to check your email, the website, download the free app, and follow Woodside on social media so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on around here. You can drop your paper, connection card, and offering in the basket when it's passed during the final song. Now, let's continue worshiping God. Paul worked his way down the coast of Asia, the western part of Turkey today, and he was on his way in a hurry to get back to Jerusalem. He couldn't stop to visit the people in Ephesus where he'd spent three years, so instead he invited them to come down to the Mediterranean seashore where he could give them a message before he departed. This was the final message he gave to them, and it was filled with sadness and tears. For he said to the elders of the house churches he had planted in Ephesus that they would never see his face again. He knew that he would be passing on to Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit told him that there would be problems and persecutions, even imprisonment, when he arrived in Jerusalem. He had had many plots that he faced up till now, but he knew that there was even more trouble ahead. And yet he was eager to go forward. For he said to the Ephesian elders, my life is not worth anything except to invest in sharing the good news of grace from God. To turn to God, believe in Jesus, and follow the Spirit. And so he gave to these elders important instructions because he knew he would never see them again. First he said to them, do not shrink from sharing the good news. He said, make sure you always tell that to others. That was the purpose for which he gave his life, and he wanted them to do the same. The second thing he said is, be a good shepherd to the flock that God has placed in your care. That means making sure that you always look out for their needs 
as well as protecting them from, he said, the fierce wolves who may come from without and within to distort the truth of God. So be a shepherd and care for this flock. And the last thing he said is be selfless. He said, I never asked for anybody's gold or silver. I worked with my own hands to provide for my needs so that I could humbly give to all of you and share with you. And he left them with this one last quote from the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. As we care for the people God has given into our lives, the lambs he's placed in our care to shepherd and keep, make sure that we always give our blessing to them and always look that we could give more than look to receive. Share your care with others. You may have heard the news. I've been promoted. When I was last up here giving the message, I was so happy to share that our son Dan and his wife Liz were expecting our first grandchild. Well, he's here, and I've been promoted. Warren and I are now known as Nana and Grandpa. <laughs> Riley Kirkwood Marr. Thank you. Riley Kirkwood Marr was born October 22nd, 2023. He's pretty fabulous, isn't he? And of course, already an Eagles fan. Grandchildren are everything all you seasoned grandparents told us. Amazing, incredible, and full of so much love and joy. And I've loved sharing the news of Riley with you all, my church family. I teared up submitting the prayer request and was so touched when my dear friend Cindy Montez cried as she shared the prayer joy in the classic service. I feel truly blessed by our church community and the way we care for each other, sharing in each other's joys, concerns, and sorrows. This is what God calls us to do it is how God designed his church. And this is also Paul's final message in Acts 20. For the past few months, we followed Paul's travels as he spread the gospel throughout Greece. Now Paul senses his time on this earth is coming to an end. And he feels led by the Holy Spirit to head to Jerusalem. But before he goes, he wants to encourage these new baby Christians in Ephesus. He invested three years of his life here, sharing the good news, teaching the people, and helping plant small house churches throughout the region. He knows he'll never see their faces again in this life, and he worries about leaving these tiny newborn congregations to fend for themselves. So he invites the elders of these house churches to meet him along the coast of Turkey. When they gather along the shore, Paul gives these beloved elders their most important charge. Keep watch over yourselves and all of the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. For three years, Paul has been their shepherd, living, teaching, and guiding them. But God is calling Paul elsewhere, and now Paul is handing over the shepherd's staff to them. God is promoting them to be shepherds, to care for their flock, the one given to them by God through the Holy Spirit. And guess what? You've been promoted, and you've been promoted, and you've been promoted, and I've been promoted. God promotes all of us asks all of us to be shepherds to the flock he gives us. Who is my flock? Who is your flock? Who are your sheep? God gives us our sheep in many ways. Your sheep might be your family, your children, your partner, 
your coworkers, your neighbors, your friends at school, your teammates, your small group, your youth group, your serving team, maybe somebody sitting next to you on the train or right here in worship. Someone God puts on your heart over and over again. <clears throat> here you'll find your herd, your flock, your sheep. Why was it so important for Paul to give the Ephesians this charge? And why is it so important for us to step up as shepherds? If you know anything about sheep, they like to wander. They will walk right off a cliff if they aren't stopped. Often they have to be literally out of their, at the end of their rope, literally out of options and resources, in their case food, before they will turn back to the shepherd. Know any people like that? People who are wandering, people who are lost, people who are out of options, out of resources, out of hope, people who are at the end of their rope. Chances are there are at least several of those people in the flock God has waiting for you. Like those wayward sheep, people need guidance, strength, and support. They need the love and saving grace of Jesus. And they need you and me to help lead them to his waiting arms. God asks us to care for and teach people, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit that changes hearts and minds. God doesn't ask us to do it all alone. He sends the Holy Spirit to partner with us. Paul has great advice for us in his message to the Ephesians. First, he says, tend God's flock. Tend, to care for, to pay attention to, to be concerned about. If Jesus places a person in your flock, your first responsibility before you say a word about God or faith or really anything much at all is to care for, pay attention to, and be concerned about them. There's a famous saying I'm sure most of you know. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. It sounds simple, but it holds a lot of truth for us. To care for the people in your flock, you need to spend time with them, cultivate a relationship with them, Paul says, remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and my many tears for you. You know these hands of mine have worked hard to supply my own needs, and I have been a constant example of you, to you of how you can help those in need by working hard. Paul didn't just swoop into town preaching loudly, telling the Ephesians what they should, and shouldn't do. Paul lived, worked, and cared for the Ephesians as he taught them the good news of Jesus Christ. Do you ever see people on the streets carrying signs and yelling, repent, sinners, the end is near? Do you think they really get many converts? What a different approach Paul modeled, Jesus modeled. I think of Jesus breaking bread with tax collectors and sinners, of sharing water and conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, inviting the little children to come to him, not allowing the disciples to send them away, thinking Jesus had more important things to do. Sharing care builds trust and a relationship so that when the time comes, when your flock your people begin to ask spiritual questions when they wonder what the source of your love and joy is, they will be ready to listen. I have a friend who has prayed for a great number of years for her neighbors, friends who do not share her faith, and in fact, we're often pretty hostile about it. So she prayed. And she and her husband built a friendship with this couple through shared activities acts of care and kindness, and sharing joy and laughter, hard times and sorrow. And while my friend clearly lived her life as a practicing Christian, any discussion of faith was off the table.
20 years have gone by. Just recently, her friends raised a few faith questions, and my friend, my friend felt God nudging her to share a podcast with them. Guess what? A beautiful dialogue has begun. Authentically, build on friendship, caring, and consistent prayer. I can't wait to see what God develops. Paul also reminds them and us to keep watch over yourselves. What is the biggest complaint we often hear about Christians? That we're hypocrites. If our lives don't match our actions, no one will listen. As Christians, we must be known by our actions, by our lives, and most importantly, by our love. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul reminds us that our lives are to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is that what we strive to show? Is that what people see when they look at us? If not, our words are simply a noisy gong and a clanging symbol. We are also called to give opportunities, to respond to the opportunities that God gives us, to share his good news. And our lives, our actions, will often speak the loudest. And we are called to defend God's flock. Paul warned the elders, I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come, come in among you after I leave and will not spare the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. So be on guard. Every day our Christian beliefs are challenged. Why go to church? The church is so out of touch. Plus it's the one day you can sleep in. You don't need faith and you certainly don't need to gather and worship. Just catch a podcast, check out something online. False teachers are everywhere. TV, radio, TikTok, politics. It is way too easy to lose your faith, your true beliefs in the rabbit hole of social media. Fight back against these wolves in sheep's clothing. Pastor Doug shared a few weeks ago that Americans spend five years and four months of their lives on social media. Yet we often can't find an hour to pray, be in God's word, take time to worship. Gathering as the family of God strengthens us as we join together to offer praise to our Heavenly Father. I am really overwhelmed as I feel the power of the Holy Spirit through our words, our music, and our joy as we gather here to worship. And like we saw in the announcements, we have an awesome opportunity to strengthen our own faith and invite others to join us coming up here at Woodside in January. You might have heard hints about it. Alpha is coming. Raise your hand if you've heard of Alpha. Raise your hand if you've taken Alpha. Raise your hand if you wonder what the heck Alpha even is. Alpha is a great way for anyone believers, seekers, skeptics, to ask questions, dig deeper, develop community, and find or strengthen their relationship with God. And it's a safe, casual environment where all questions are welcome. Beginning in mid-January, we'll offer Alpha during our higher ground worship time. Participants who sign up for Alpha will share a meal, watch a short video on faith questions, and then talk about it in small groups. Questions such as, is there more to life than this? Why and how do I pray? How can I have faith? And who is Jesus? Check the box on the connection card if you're interested in learning more. And pray about who you might invite to come along with you. And finally, Paul reminds us we need to spend ourselves on God's flock. Paul declared... I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord has given me, 
the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. What a statement. Most of us spend our whole lives trying to prove ourselves, to prove that we are worthy. We seek approval from others, from the world. We seek money and fame, awards and achievements to feel good about ourselves. As one truly trying to change approval seeker, I can tell you it's exhausting. Anyone else? Imagine how free I would feel, you would feel, if we didn't have to meet anyone's expectations, if we didn't need to win anyone's approval, if we never had to prove our worth again. Friends, we don't. Paul could work so hard to support his task, his mission. He could pour himself out for others and yet still run his race with every ounce of his energy because he knew deep down in his soul that Jesus loved him, accepted him, and saved him unconditionally and eternally. Paul, a man who spent half his life persecuting Jews. But on the road to Damascus, Paul had an encounter with Jesus that changed his life forever. And Jesus offers the same to us. He wants to have a relationship with us that will change our lives forever. A relationship where we are loved, accepted, and saved just as we are by the grace of Jesus, not by anything we do. We can serve freely out of that love and incredible power if we just surrender to his will, to his love. And Paul knew in pouring himself out, he was eternally filled. We are often so focused on our problems, our worries, our things. How will we afford college for our three kids? Will we have enough money when we retire? How will we get it all done? So we work to, aw to amass more money, more things to help us, more possessions. Instead of thanking God for our blessings, we waste our time stressing. Jesus taught a different way. It is more blessed to give than to receive. The real blessing comes when we give ourselves away, when we spend ourselves for others. Have you ever signed up for a service project and then realized you were so busy and wondered why in the world you signed up for yet another thing? But you committed, so you go, a little begrudgingly, but you show up. And then God shows off. You end up being blessed, seeing how grateful people are, receiving joy from the people you believed you were sent to help. A few years back, my growth group supported a single mom with three kids and a baby on the way. She had just been approved for subsidized housing, but she did not have a single piece of furniture. She had never amassed those blessings. Many of you stepped up and donated sofas, beds, rugs, tables, chairs. It was truly joyful to be able to help her set up her first apartment. But one thing was still lacking a crib for that unborn baby. A woman from Woodside I only vaguely knew called and said, I can't be there when you pick it up, but I have a crib I would like to donate. Wonderful, I thought. It was perfect for that tiny baby. He had a beautiful, safe place to rest his head. I later found out why the woman could not be there when we picked up the crib it would break her heart. That crib was a gift. It was a gift for the baby they hoped to have. But years had passed. So many prayers were poured out, and still no baby. Now they had passed the age where most people have children, but the crib remained empty. When she heard about this pregnant young woman needed a crib, she prayed long and hard and felt God telling her to give the crib to someone who truly needed it now. She obeyed God even as her heart broke. As she did, 
she began to feel peace. God had surrounded her with many other children to love and bless and care for. She would accept his blessing and bless someone else. This was not an easy peace. It cost her and her husband a great deal, the giving up of their dream of a child of their own. A few years later, I formed a close friendship with this woman as we helped support pastors Gloria and Steve during Steve's final battle with cancer. I saw firsthand her beautiful heart, and I marveled, even as she had a very full plate herself, she continually poured herself out for others. She often came right from an overnight nursing shift to help Steve or lead her growth group. Her life was truly a testimony to me, as it was and is to so many others. One night during Advent, I sat with my new Christian sister in Christ <clears throat> in worship. There was a lightness to her, and her eyes were dancing. The words tumbled out in a joyful whisper. I have something to share. Dave and I are going to have a baby. I can't believe it. It's really happening. I was overwhelmed with joy. This woman had given up her crib, her hope, her dream to help a young woman she did not even know. What did Pastor Doug preach on that night? Elizabeth and her miraculous pregnancy with John the Baptist. Carrie and Dave Steele became the very joyful parents of John David Steele on May 28, 2013. And as so many of you know, Carrie continues to pour herself out for others here at Woodside as a beloved growth group and adventure club leader, serving in mission fields locally and around the world, and in her work helping God's littlest miracles, her flock, in the neonatal ICU. Friends, there are Sunday school kids, youth group kids, nursery kids who need you. There are single moms, people in recovery, addicted teens, code blue guests, lonely people who need you. There are habitat houses, soup kitchens, and food pantries that need you. There are friends, neighbors, coworkers, classmates, teammates, and family members who need you. God does not expect you to help everyone. Instead, he empowers you to find your flock, to find your sheep. Jesus loves our sheep so much that he shed his own blood for them. And now he is asking and trusting his precious lambs to you. Are you going to sit back on the sidelines, consumed with responsibilities and worries, and watch God's sheep wonder? Or will you pour yourself out for others until you attain the only accolade that matters, the crown that Jesus will give you as he says, welcome home. Well done, good and faithful servant. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Father God, we are truly awed that you choose us, that you let us do your work here on earth. God, we know that you will be with us through every trial, through every temptation, as we pour ourselves out for you and your kingdom. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing this last song together. I invite members of the prayer team to come over to the side. And as a reminder, you're welcome to pray with them during this last song or at the end of the service.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a great week.